CM Punk, Hangman Page, everything we've been talking about over the last couple of days. And there have been a lot of different stories that have come out today. And uh, everybody's getting all sorts of information from all sorts of places. And people are saying this, they're denying that. And uh, no one's really talking publicly. But I think there are a few things that, uh, that we can confirm because they actually have been confirmed from both sides. And uh, one of them is that the claim from the CM Punk side is that he apologized to Hangman Page. And there were other things that were claimed as well. But what I can say is that he did, in fact, send a text message to Hangman Page apologizing for the promo on Saturday. So that is from both sides. That did happen. He did apologize to him via text message. And there are... So so the story that I got from the, the story defending him was that it was a... Uh, attempt to do a comedy line that backfired and he realized at the minute he did it that it had backfired um, that was the line I watched the thing and it certainly seemed like uh, he got mad at um, a sign in the crowd and that was his reaction to it so um, you know and then the line about the heart and soul you know obviously that was in reference to the press release that came out with uh the announcement of the signing of uh, the Young Bucks, Kenny Omega, and Adam Page, um, where one of them said they, that, you know, we're the heart and soul of the company, and he reacted negatively to that, you know, in that promo. Yes. And then there were there were claims that he said that he did not have Hangman removed or not allowed to be into the building on Saturday. And uh, obviously there are many in the company that believe that he did, Although I did hear from people that said that they would not be surprised if, in fact, because of what happened earlier with Ryan Nemeth, that it was, in fact, management's call or Tony Khan's call not to have Hangman come to the building after what happened to Ryan Nemeth. And uh, I did talk to people who believed that that actually could be true, that Punk had nothing to do with it, and that that decision was made because of what had happened with Nemeth. And they just sort of figured... You know, let's not have any more issues here. Hangman doesn't need to be in the building for this. We'll just have him go elsewhere. So there there are certainly people that believe that that is true. And, of course, there are also other people that don't believe that. And they think that Punk was responsible for him not being there. But uh, Punk's side is claiming that he did not, uh, he was not responsible for Hangman not being in the building. They're claiming that they had no idea that Hangman was even there. Yes. Yes, that's what they're claiming, yes. So there were a lot of other um, and, things. And uh, others, like I said, others are, are compl- compl- uh, claiming something different. Um, I guess everyone sa- is is agreeing that he did get uh, Daniels removed. Yes. And the story there is that if a steel can't come, then Chris Daniels shouldn't come. I have no idea. Um, that, you know, that, that logic doesn't really fit. I mean, given that uh, um, there's, you know. I, you know, he's the head of talent relations, completely different job, but you know, I mean, the whole thing is, uh, the whole thing's a mess. And, um, I know people who are, uh, very, very, that, that are not like I would say affiliated with either side who are just very, very frustrated that this thing is continues to happen and continues to, um, you know, two weeks before the biggest show that the company's ever going to do, um, that this comes up and, you know, it's the same thing from a year, literally a year and a half ago, and nothing has changed because nobody has changed. You know, it's the same old, same old. All right, we've got a bunch of questions in the mailbag. We're going to go over some of these to start off today. And uh, if there's anything else we can add to any of this as it gets going, we'll, uh, we'll tell you about that. So Chris here says, wondering what your thoughts are on how Tony Khan can move forward with all of the Punk lead drama backstage at this point. They reportedly had a sit-down last spring with Punk and Jericho, have a soft brand split in place, but it seems like it did not improve the situation very much, if at all. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, it's... I don't really have a great answer. I mean, the great answer is is that... The great uh, answer is that everyone needs to move on. 
is what the great answer is. Yeah, like, some, some, something will always... I think if always, everybody some, just accepted that there's not going to be a feud between CM Punk and the Elite, and everyone well, is just no going to no, do their no, thing... No, 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 no one's going no to accept that. Right? Well, That's a different story. If, if everyone could accept that, and if the everyone feud, could just the, move on and forget this ever, ever happened, then you've got a chance here. But if people keep bringing it up and keep talking about it, it's just going to keep going. The feud is not an issue. I mean, it's an issue in a, in a sense, but there's no... The, the, whether they do a feud or don't do a feud is not the big issue. That's an issue to... You can do it. You cannot do it. They're not doing it, and these issues you know, keep coming up. Essentially, what we have is a situation where people um, need to... like. I think everyone needs to look at this and... You know, essentially, the thing with and and and, and you know, it's really from the punk side, the situation is is that he gets mad because if anyone brings anything up, but he but he's the catalyst for every one of these things. So the, really, if there's anything, it's that like when he came back, he should have been there, and 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 his mentality is is that it's not good for business, it's not good for the public image of the company, and he's not wrong. For all of this stuff to come out, but the point is, is the catalyst of every one of these things was him. You know, he's mad at Ryan Nimeth to, from reacting to the ESPN article. Well, the ESPN article was his quotes, and you know, so it's like that's you know, it's like you know, you're making the company look bad. It's like your quotes were what made the company look bad to ESPN. He wrote something on Twitter without even mentioning the guy's name. Now, was that right or wrong? And and should Punk have gone, hey, we can't be doing this stuff to him anymore? Um, we can't be doing this stuff publicly? Sure, go and say that. But also admit that it was in response to something. It was not something that he did out of nowhere. Now, you know, so I mean, I think the whole thing is, is that quit doing, you know, I guess you could say this for everyone. Quit going public, not, not even going public, quit doing things to dig at the other people, quit trying to be sly, quit doing these promos. But Dave, um, that's what I'm saying about the match. Yes, the, the the issue with the match, the idea of doing a match together, is one side has no interest in doing the match. And if the other side is continuously, we talked about this yesterday, the other side continuously bringing up the desire to do this a, match or wanting to do this match every, is only... Causing people to chew. Well, why won't they do the match? Why? Blah 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 get, blah. Get, this is. The, why would the, you bring up Hangman? What's the okay. point of bringing up Hangman? Okay, here's the thing. There's only there's only one match. There's I mean there's only one person basically that the match that there's an issue with the match. FTR and the Young Bucks are wrestling in two weeks. Okay, that's and there's no issue with that. Tony Khan, by the way, Tony Khan came up with that match. He ran it by both. They both said fine. There was no issue. It wasn't like, oh, you got to do this. Oh, you got to do that. It was fine. You know, it was something they made up. Oh, you know, I wrote about it when it happened. They, you know, actually a little bit after it happened. But they made up. Everyone has, you know, I mean, are they best friends? I don't know. They're they're talking. They talk for, you know, when... Uh, when but that's Tony... not the match we're talking about here. Well, we're talking match? about CM Punk... Either versus either in a tag match or a six man or certain singles matches, that's the match everybody is talking about. CM Punk doing well, a feud with the Elite, okay. and one side has no interest in doing that match. And every time people bring that match up, it makes the other side even more irritated. And if everyone could just move on from it, I think that would solve a lot of problems. You it's don't need the... to talk about the Hangman. You don't need to talk about the Bucks. You don't need to talk about this match. Just move on from it. Just well, move not, on from it. But the thing is, it's it's not even. It's got nothing to do with the match. But it he's does. Talking, he's talking. No, he. This, that promo was off television. It was not a promo to build a match. It was just. I know, something but that said, everyone it was thinks promo. it's leading to a match. That's that's fans. all people were talking. Yes, but that's fans, fans are watching the show, and but then fans on go on it social media. It wasn't on. And it wasn't then on fans, TV. but fans have been talking about it all weekend. Are they doing an angle? No, are not, they okay. doing an angle? No, and they get mad. Well, why aren't they doing an angle? Well, why not, won't these people work together? 
They're not doing it. That, that it wasn't gets an angle. brought up, and we get these issues over and over again. Well, guess what? You know what the thing should be is is that when you are cutting a promo, you should be professional, and you should be talking about the product and building up matches. You shouldn't be you know re- reacting to signs in the crowd or reacting to a press release. You know, I mean, it's like. Or you could, if you're reacting to a press release, you should be doing it to build up a match. If you do not have this match built up, you got your own feuds, okay? If you don't have a match built up or anything like that, why are you doing this, okay? I mean, it's like, I don't want to analyze this guy anymore. But, I mean, the whole point is is that, okay, he said he's sorry. Let's move on. Let's not have another incident. Um, but what's going to happen... Like, Tony still needs to get control. The idea that Christopher Daniels can't go backstage at a show, um, with whatever logic they came up with, is just completely ridiculous. Uh, as far as um, everything else, you know, I just kind of think that, uh, you know, it speaks for itself. Um, I, I'm, you know, it just, it's just. Well, speaking he, of Daniels, here's he, a I question. Mean, okay. How is it possible that Punk can have the head of talent relations removed from the building? Isn't Daniel supposed to be there in case there are any talent issues, questions, concerns, feedback? Unless he is no longer head of talent relations, does this mean that Punk now has an office position above Daniel's or that Tony Khan was not in the building? What it means is is that uh, they, that he has the power, obviously, um, to do things like that. And they are doing everything they can to keep him happy because um, when you are a draw in this business and they feel that he is indispensable or close to indispensable because they allow him to do this because they are trying to launch this show on Saturday and the feeling is obviously that having him is more important uh, than having a, you know, a situation where the head of talent relations can go to a show. They feel that it's more important to keep CM Punk happy because of the attempt to launch on Saturday. And that's not unusual in this business. Um, You know, when uh, Hulk Hogan got mad at George Scott, George Scott was gone as Booker. You know, I mean, that's just how wrestling has always been. The top draws will always have that power. And it's a unique situation because of the feeling that... uh, you know, they're trying to get this big, giant television deal. And um, the Saturday show is very, very important. And, and they clearly uh, believe that he needs to be on the Saturday show or there is a great chance that the show will do lower numbers. And in the long run, those lower numbers will mean less money when they do the new contract renewal at the expense of um, the locker room and everything else so that's the basic situation hey if you love this clip have i got a deal for you wrestlingobserver.com you have a commute do you work out at the gym do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today well wrestlingobserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute, as noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer newsletter. You also get Observer archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. All for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never, you'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.